welcome to another video blog with me, Mike, from Everyday Ups and Downs. Today I thought we would take a look at uh, overnight hypoglycemia and uh, my experience with the Minimed 640G and SmartGuard. Uh, first, a little bit of background. I've been uh, living with type 1 diabetes for uh, 25 years, more or less, um, and uh, overnight hypoglycemia has been, certainly in the last decade or so, uh, something that I have struggled with a bit. Um, after the first sort of 15 years, when I was on um, basal bolus, uh, multiple daily injections, um, a third of the day, eight hours of sleep is a third of your day, trusting a third of my day to, to uh, one or two basal in, insulin injections, just the results were never brilliant for me. Um, and while some people um, get woken if, they, if their levels dip low overnight, I found that wasn't my experience. And as soon as I came across the, uh, the principle of systematically testing my basal insulin on injections to make sure it was doing what it should do, I'll just put a link uh, down the bottom here so you can, uh, you can catch up on that technique if you're not familiar with it, if you're on injections or even if you're on an insulin pump. Basal testing for me is really, really important technique. Um, it's, it's more applicable if you're on a pump because you have uh, the ability to, to fine tune your basal profile uh, but even on injections, uh, one or two uh, basal injections a day, um, get, making sure they're right, not running over, not running over, uh, under, really, really important for me because if I find if my basal is out, then everything else just falls to pieces. My meal doses don't work, they either shoot over or they, 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 they don't quite keep up. Uh, and my correction factors don't work, and all the sort of the ways of trying to massage my numbers fall to pieces if my basal's wrong. And, and it, as soon as I started basal testing, uh, um, well, fairly soon, I just, I discovered that my basal profile does not sit still um, at any point during the year. I can be um, a week or, or, or 14 days away from just needing a little bit more of a, um, of a tweak. Some people um, can run longer than that. They might be every three months or every six months they may need to make a slight change. But for me, it's certainly on the pump and with the flexibility and accuracy that permits um, it's, it's, more, it's pretty much an ongoing project, is to just keep those basal profiles in check. Uh, I have different ones for different days, weekdays and weekends, for, even just when I'm, um, when I'm getting up a bit later. Um, but making sure I've got the right basal insulin working overnight really, really helps me. Um, and of course, any sort of uh, sensor uh, is, is really, really useful in, uh, in, in managing that process. You can do it by waking up um, every couple of hours and doing a finger stick test, that's no fun, uh, but it is effective. Um, but uh, things like the Abbott Freestyle Libra sensors and uh, the, the, the Minimed 640G, the N-Lite sensors, really, really help me to identify um, uh, basal profile. But SmartGuard is an extra level again, because that, um, well, you'll see in a minute, but that just that adds um, a whole extra level of protection. Uh, so let's have a look. I've never run my Veo pump with uh, sensors, with the N-Lite sensors, so my experience with the 640G and SmartGuard is the first time I've had an integrated sensor and pump system. But I have had a, um, some experience of 24-hour of, um, monitoring, although not a traditional CGM, with Abbott's uh, Freestyle Libra, which is a bit like a CGM and a bit like a blood glucose meter in that it does monitor you continually for... Um, for the 24 hours a day, as long as you scan it sufficient times, but it doesn't have uh, any alerts, so it will measure you, it will give you your 24 hour trace as long as you uh, scan it uh, at least three times a day, but it doesn't, it doesn't alert you when you're going high or low. Uh, and that was really one of the first times that I noticed quite how long I can spend overnight in hypoglycemia, or in, uh, if not technically in hypoglycemia, in very low blood glucose levels, without actually knowing anything about it. So let's have a look at a few of those reports and see what I was up against. Well, I say me, see what SmartGuard was up against. So this is a fairly, uh, this is one of my fairly recent Libra sensors. Uh, and you can see here, this is this is the sort of um, this is the sort of overview, um, and this is the this is the hypoglycemia here, and this is a 14 days. This is a summary of of what's been happening over the 14 days, and actually for the rest of the time, very little hypoglycemia is going on. I've clearly managed to um, do some reasonable work there, but overnight, even even with generally very little um, hypoglycemia, overnight it's still looking messy. There's one really massive long one. A little diddly short one there, and another short one 
uh, well, just about breakfast time waking up. I mean, that may even be after breakfast. There, that could have sort of that could be a, a, an after breakfast time. But this, this long period of overnight hypoglycemia or overnight low blood glucose levels, I think, I think it's just it's below four. Um, uh, it just it, it's bound to make a big dent in my hypo warning signs. Let me just flick to a to another one now. I'll just go up, um, see whether we can go to. Here's another one. That's, that's a doozy there. Look, there's just stacks of it. Again, not much um, in the way of hypo. There's a bit, a few here and there. It's another 14 days, and it's all there. It's all overnight. And I will have been working during this 14 day period to try and see if I could. Um, eradicate some of those there's another one that's not looking too that too bad generally or is that the one we no that's, that's a different one again you know some up here not so much here uh one more one more for luck what's that one uh again uh more up, up here at this one but still big sections big sections of so you can see that even with my best efforts um and with 24 hour data um it's it's i don't always find it easy to conquer this overnight period because I have to make a judgment at I don't know 11 o'clock or whenever I'm heading to bed um, and, and that has to then account for everything that's going on any food that might be still digesting or any bolus insulin I might think I need for anything that's being digested slowly it's those guesses those judgment calls that I find uh, are, are particularly problematic in that overnight period and I don't always want to be waking up at three o'clock in the morning to check but you can see that sometimes that would have been a really really good tactic um, this one in particular looking nasty and messy um, and all of that time spent low is doing my hypo warning signs no good at all so uh, so let's have a look and see how smart guard gets on morning it's about 4 a.m and uh, smart guard's just been uh, working overtime tonight i just wanted to show you what it's been up to so um you can see the orange bar there where smart guard was kicking in let's just drill into that So there's the three hour, six hour, there's twelve hours, so this is tea time. I didn't really come down after tea, I was sort of nine all evening, so I took a correction just before bed, as recommended. Dropped fairly steeply afterwards, and then this here, this twelve hour, um, uh, this this, uh, this smart guard block here, is uh, it's the full two hours. And you can see that after that, it still hadn't really done anything and then another smart card kicked in straight after so from just after midnight until now I've had no basal insulin at all and that's just not something I would have done myself um, and uh, and it doesn't match what happened the night before so on this uh, in this situation you can see there's the red line there and um, and smart guys just prevented me from having a mega low all night um, and just kept me in the safe zone so that's, that's been really, really useful. Good morning. It's another glorious smart guard morning. I've been tweaking my basals recently. Let's have a look at how last night went. So here we are, let's just have a look at this. Uh, it's five point something this morning. That looks pretty promising so far. I just drill into there. There's the three hours. And here we go, there is smart guard between three and five in the morning. Uh, I needed a little drop off of basal and no, no rebound straight from there it was I was high when I went to bed there was a little correction there I blame the blame the late night ice cream uh, and a little bit of correction which would have just slightly overcooked it if it had not been for that um, smart guard stopping basal um, for those two hours it was for the full two hours so I did get an alarm at the end but uh, but I'm, you've got to be happy with that um, so I think uh, that's Smart Guard really helping me out again overnight. One more overnight hypo saved. So today's an interesting day to look at overnight hypos, um, particularly where Smart Guard's concerned. You can see that Smart Guard was working overtime overnight um, uh, from about midnight onwards, and again at three in the morning, and then almost, and then again just about, at, well, just before sort of eight o'clock. Um, now this is interesting because over the last a few weeks I've been adjusting my basal pattern. I have to adjust my basal pattern probably once every week or two. Um, just making small changes just to keep things 
relatively steady. If I go into the um, uh, history here, like that, then that's last night's trace, which you can see looks pretty good. Um, unfortunately, these history streams don't show when smart guards active, which makes them, in, or when you've bolused or anything, they just show you the trace. Although all the data is on the pump, that's I find that very frustrating because when I'm trying to review what's happened on previous days and I can't remember, these history traces are much less useful than they might be if they showed me 24 hours with just those little bars and dots to indicate what was going on or at least serve as a reminder. Um, the previous day, you can see it's pretty flat <laughs> overnight. There was a little dip just after breakfast there, but um, and this is sort of a late night snack finishing off. I can't remember, to be honest, whether there was a bit of smart guard there or not. Um, the day before, um, a general rise. So this day, I've been, I've been adjusting my four o'clock ish onwards um, one to try and sort sort this out. Um, the day before, it's a general after the after my late night snack, uh, um, a general rise, which is why I started making those changes. The day before, late night snack and a general rise. The day before late night stack and a general rise. But because um, I've got smart guard acting, I can I can look at today's trace. Let's go back here. I can look at today's and I can see now that because um, I've had no basal insulin until what five o'clock? Zero. Not 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 a drip. And uh, that shows me that I need a lot less basal insulin active over this period. Um, I may decide not to have a snack later on in the evening just to make sure I can see what's going on without bolus insulin messing things up um, but I could but I, I haven't had any overnight hypoglycemia to have to identify that uh, without a trace without a, um, either a Libra sensor or or smart guard acting I may never even have known that I was that low that long overnight as we've seen but um, uh, you know tonight well the, as of this morning I know I need to make a change but I know I need to make that change without having had a long period of hypoglycemia overnight. And that's a real win for SmartGuard for me. SmartGuard and overnight hypoglycemia, that's when really for me it works absolutely brilliantly. Now, is it just me or do you get confused by what they actually mean by hypoglycemia? I know in the UK often we say four is the floor, four millimoles a litre, and that's a useful um, starting point to, in, in terms of avoiding hypoglycemia. In the States, of course, they use 70 milligrams per deciliter, which is somewhere between 3.8 and 3.9. In some bits of Europe, they sort of use 3.6 or thereabouts. And in different academic papers, where they use clamp studies to see when the brain is affected by, by low blood glucose levels, it can be anywhere between 3 and 3.5. So in terms of working out how many overnight hypos I'm having, sometimes I find it difficult to understand exactly what frame of reference I should be using. For the purposes of, of this video blog though, I'm going to set it at 3.5. 4 as the floor um, gives me a little bit of room for manoeuvre, but by the time I get to 3.5 really I think I should, be, should have done something about it already. So I, what I'm interested to see is whether or not SmartGuard has managed to stop me getting below 3.5, given that SmartGuard is set to try and always keep me above 4. Let's have a look at the data. I've downloaded the data from the pump, the, from, from the 640G, to Minimed's CareLink suite of software. And I can set in that um, my low limit and then run a sensor glucose analysis, which divides the day um, by sort of time periods and gives me an amount of minutes during that time period that the sensor has read below a particular level. Let's have a look. So here are the sensor overlay graphs divided by meal event um, and if I just scroll you can see uh, some pretty graphs up there with seven days overlaid and if I just scroll down to the bottom here there's some tables and then there's the pie charts and what we're interested in here really is this sleeping period so this is the first week on the 640G um, and we've got uh, no percent below uh, 3.5 you can see up here I've set my sleeping period to be 11.30 to, um, to seven in the morning, and the range I've set as three and a half to nine, thereabouts. Um, average is 7.2, got up to 10, went down uh, to 3.9. And standard deviation 1.6 is fairly tightly grouped, um, and there are 630 sensor readings taken during that period. Um, but importantly, none of them were below 3.5. 
Uh, so let's have a look at the next week. And the next week. And uh, let's have a look at the next week. Are we beginning to spot a pattern yet? Still nothing. Nope, nothing there. And the last one. So there you go. In through all nine weeks of my 64 days with the 640G, I'm having a few extra cheeky ones at the end now, but in all of the nine weeks, I've had no readings overnight below 3.5. Um, and, and so that is 100% reduction in overnight hypoglycemia for me. If we take a look at uh, at the 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 state the same stats but shift that um, so it's 3.9 it's checking for the low blood glucose but not perhaps clinically hypoglycemia then um, it changes very slightly so here's the first week reset with those parameters to read 3.9 to 8.9 first week there still showing zero no readings below 3.9 for the whole of the set first seven days on the 640g week two still nothing Week three, though, here we've had 25 minutes uh, over the course of the week. So perhaps one or two low alarms, one or two periods when SmartGuard didn't quite keep me above 3.9 the whole time, um, but still pretty good. In fact, in terms of overnight hypoglycemia, for the entire nine weeks where I've been wearing the SmartGuard system and with the Enlight sensors, I've had three whole weeks where I've had no minutes at all um, uh, below 3.9 and above 3.5, um, and so nothing below that. So that's that's 100% no overnight hypoglycemia for those periods. And then another two weeks where um, just five minutes in each in each of those weeks, which is just just grazing the surface in my mind. So SmartGuard is for five out of the for almost half of the time, SmartGuard has prevented overnight hypoglycemia entirely. Um, there were a few weeks during my um, 64, 64 days with the 640G where I've had a bit more overnight hypoglycemia, perhaps 100 minutes overall. But on averages, um, com compared to periods when I've been wearing um, any kind of continuous sensor and I've been able to see what's been going on overnight, the difference is just extraordinary. Smart guard and the sensors and that ability to um, stop the basal, cut the basal um, in order to um, avoid um, hypoglycemia, certainly proper hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia for me, um, has just been amazing, transformative. Um, it won't catch everything and you do obviously need to try and keep your basal patterns in check uh, because SmartGuard is a, is a fairly slow moving um, uh, interaction. It, uh, it can only do so much. It's only got a little bit of room for manoeuvre and, it, and it, has, it takes a little while to get going, which is why the SmartGuard system, if you look back to my How to SmartGuard work video blog, um, it has to start early in order to give itself time to take effect. So you go, go, can't go crazy with, the, with things like whacking in corrections before bedtime, uh, but it does give me more confidence where I've, I've got um, uh, perhaps a, a meal that's very slow to digest, a takeaway or something, um, and, and I've got a little bit of, of insulin on board, but I'm not quite sure whether it's enough. SmartGuard gives me a little bit of added protection. It's the first time, really, in my whole 25 years of living with type 1 diabetes, like I felt a piece of technology has been actively helping me out. There have been some good gadgets in the past that have helped with some of the maths and some of the, some of the sorting out. And the pump, of course, is brilliant for flexibility. But SmartGuard is intervening when I, even with the alarms turned off, when I know nothing about it, and it's helping helping me out, and it's just massaging those levels and keeping me more on an even keel, particularly overnight, um, the results have been amazing. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.